You're just starting a module on medieval theology. It's a module whose main characters you have probably all heard of. Anselm, Bonaventure, Thomas Aquinas and William of Ockham. But there are several things going on in the module and they're running in parallel. The first thing is straightforward giving you an experience of the diversity of medieval theology. For instance, Anselm was a monastic theologian. He wrote primarily in what we would call a reflective style for his own monastic brothers. William of Ockham, however, 300 years later, is very much a recognisable modern academic He's far closer to the sort of people that you and I are. Anselm, for instance, if he had 200 books in his library, would have considered that a very large library. By the time William was writing, he had the entire backup of the University of Paris, and he took it for granted that it would be both easy to get, get virtually everything ever written by a Christian that was known at the time, and also to get long works published. When Anselm was writing, he would have wondered how many skins would have been needed for a book that he was writing, and the cost of each of those skins, and as an abbot he would have known that cost. By the time William was writing, he would have just handed it into a stationer's office in Paris, the Paciators, and they would have been able to tell the students by the number of pages of the work how much it would cost for a copy, and they would have delivered that copy to order in about a week. So it introduces you to a range of scholars, it introduces you to a range of writings, and it introduces you to their contexts. The second thing the module should bring out is the way that each of the theologians builds on the others. Hugh of St Victor knew and respected Anselm. Bonaventure and Aquinas both considered Anselm an authority. Bonaventure relied on Hugh, and Thomas certainly knew Hugh's work, though he didn't hold him in the same regard that Bonaventure did. Whereas William of Ockham knew all of the previous writers and related in a variety of ways to them. So you should see a definite progression in the way the theology is done, what it is to do theology as you move through the units of the module. The third element that I hope you will notice is that I've given you a variety of different types of work. The Preslogion is one of the great masterpieces of Latin theology. We tend to see it as a sort of logical exercise, remembering the famous words of Bertrand Russell when he was buying a tin of tobacco and he got worried uh, as he was paying for the tin of tobacco that there, there might be something in the ontological argument. So very disconsolately he got out of the tobacconist, lit his pipe and then suddenly realised, no, it was invalid anyway. And he was so happy with himself, he flicked the tin of tobacco in the air. Presumably he also caught it. But we think of the Preslogion as a sort of a logical textbook. But actually, it's better to think of it, as the great German scholar Anselm Stoltz said, as a meditation being shared by Anselm with his brother monks. Remember at the beginning he says, go into the room of one's own heart. He's taking the image out of Matthew's Gospel. And it's where it is as it were, Anselm praying and reflecting. You are overhearing, or rather the myth is he's letting his brothers overhear, his own private meditations. And so he's able to move in and outwards between doing complex logic and prayer sentence by sentence. Then we come to Hewis and Victor. What a strange book. 
in a way, it is the first modern book. It was written to be read in the way that you and I would read the newspaper. We read it as a text conveying ideas rather than sounds being heard on the ear. Hugh would be amazed to think that these lectures, where I'm not physically present to you, are being, you're actually hearing me. He thought of hearing as something that could only happen in immediate physical presence. Otherwise, it would be just ideas that would become paper and become ideas in the head again. And so he writes for academics who see study as taking place in a library. This is no longer the oral world of patristic theology. But his work has many of the monastic themes that he inherited from the monastic tradition and which were still vibrant within his own community in Saint Victor in Paris. He's a transition figure. Behind is the monastic seclusion of Anselm and ahead is the hustle and bustle of the university where Bonaventure and Aquinas will teach. You then have a piece from Bonaventure. It's a small work, it's not often read, but it's deliberately chosen because it's small, neat and self-contained. You get the feeling of reading a whole short work. And it's his vision, and I think it was written towards the end of his life, and you'll see in the notes I, I, I give you the arguments for why I think it was written at the end of his life. It's what he thinks theology should be. And it's very different to what we normally experience theology to be in our everyday lives. So it partly shows us a university theologian talking about the task of theology and it also offers us a mirror to our own understanding. Well, one would have to, of course, in any module on medieval theology, have something on Aquinas. And if one has to have something on Aquinas, one has to have something from the summer. One of the tasks that I've set you in that unit is not just to get to grips with one more one more question from the summer. I could have picked almost anything. But it's to show you how a questio works. It's all too easy to pick up Aquinas, look up an index, and then say, oh, here's what Aquinas thinks. But I hope that reading through that questio, you will see that trying to define what Aquinas thinks about a project, about a topic, is something that has to be worked out very carefully. It is a debate, it's a virtual debate. Just as you watching this are watching a virtual lecture, in reading a questio, you are watching a virtual court case. On the one hand and on the other, and there's the judge in between, and somehow you not only are supposed to get an answer, but you're to learn a method of debate and see how the pros and cons work against one another and how you have to learn to argue to come to a theological position. Thomas calls them questiones. They're not conclusions. They are actually to teach you how to formulate your position with all his backup. And then I gave you another unit on Aquinas, which is very different again. It's the Aquinas that tends not to get read in universities, and it's the Aquinas that's largely forgotten. It's Aquinas the preacher. And it's just showing you the range of his theology. Thomas wrote Questiones in the Summa Theologiae, and in other works like it. He wrote 
summaries of theology. He wrote introductions. He wrote commentaries on scripture, commentaries on Aristotle. Debates with students, debates with other masters. But he was also a preacher. He was a member of the order of preachers. And the collection of homilies that you have in that unit shows you how he could do theology into very different modes. And last you, William. William, who came from Ockham in Surrey. If you ever visit the Royal Horticultural Society's place in Wisley, Ockham and the little church where he was baptised is directly across the motorway from it. The unit is intended to show you what happens when theology had developed a method so elaborate and so explicit in what it could do that it almost believed that if you put problems in at the beginning of the system, any conclusions you'd get out at the end must be valid. In a way, it's a very good early example of academic theology just doing its thing. So I hope you'll enjoy the module. I hope you will find every unit of it interesting, though I know that I doubt if anyone would say you would like each unit equally. It's deliberately chosen to give you a range, types of theology, ways of doing theology, different problems, and over a 300, roughly a 300 year period. I hope that at the end of it, no matter what piece of medieval theology you pick up and read, as part of any other module you're doing in the degree, this will have provided you with a set of skills and background to read that medieval theologian more adequately. Good luck with the module.